LeBron James is about to overtake Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the NBA's all-time leading scorer. Now, of course, there's no debate. These are the two greatest scorers of all time. But who's better? What other way to figure that out than take Kareem from 1969 and put him in 2003 with LeBron? The current scoring record is 38,387 points. So we're gonna simulate their careers from scratch and see who gets there first. With that being said, let the race begin. Get after it, LeBron! LeBron's dominant rookie season left him with 2,223 points. You can't guard the king. You can't stop him. But now, it's Kareem's turn to flaunt his skills. Damn, Kareem! You're kind of nice with it. Kareem's rookie season was dominant, but it wasn't as good as LeBron's, only putting up 1,526 points. And in the regular season, the Cavs and the Bucks met up four times, with Milwaukee winning every single one of them. But LeBron drastically outperformed Kareem each time. Oh my god, LeBron! How did he still lose? Well, he lost because Kareem had a team of experienced NBA veterans. His Bucks team's balanced, that's, I'll say that, dude. And LeBron had Elgowskis and Ricky Davis. That being the only reason the Cavaliers missed the playoffs. LeBron missed the playoffs! Regardless, LeBron is still up on Kareem by over 700 points. But in these playoffs, Kareem has a chance to get even. Because each time one of the two win a championship, the other has to sit out 20 games. And when Kareem and LeBron meet in a series, the loser has to sit out 10 games. So now with the championship incentive, Kareem's ready to compete. Kareem, you could take the lead back if you win the chip here! And with that, the fierce competitor within Kareem took over. The Bulls hopelessly tried to stop him, and the Pacers got smoked so bad they probably shouldn't have even shown up. Then in the conference finals, Kareem smacked the Nets so hard in game one, I could start to taste a championship. Dang, the... Kareem! Kareem's out for blood! But then bald Jason Kidd, bald Richard Jefferson, and Harry Chris Kamen won the next four, eliminating Kareem from the playoffs. They got absolutely throttled. I really struggled with that word. And from 2004 to 2007, Kareem would struggle in his race against LeBron. In that time, the captain would do okay, putting up around 5,300 points and climbing his way up the all-time scoring ladder. But on the other hand, LeBron didn't have the word struggle in his vocabulary. Vocabulary. LeBron amassed 8,656 points along with a championship, requiring Kareem to sit for 20 games, giving LeBron a 1,700 point cushion. And if you thought LeBron couldn't overshadow Kareem anymore, you were wrong. LeBron's one MVP, oh no. But don't you worry, after dominating rounds one and two, both Kareem and LeBron would face each other in the Eastern Conference Finals. The matchup we've all been waiting for. Kareem finally had an opportunity to get some revenge on LeBron. But King James took that personally, going out and obliterating Kareem, dunking on him, crossing him, even stealing the ball in the post. You would think LeBron was older the way he made Kareem look like his son. If LeBron goes on and wins the finals, Kareem will never recover. He really will never recover now. After going down three zip, Kareem knew his current performance wasn't gonna cut it. So in the next three games, he not only came out and dominated with his classic sky hook, but he was also working post fades and shooting shots in the mid-range, throwing down lobs, and showing LeBron he could dominate in this era too. Let's go Kareem, let's go Kareem, Kareem's not going down without a fight. And now the only thing separating Kareem from putting LeBron down 10 and maybe 30 total games was this game seven. This is for all the marbles, this is it. The first half was incredibly back and forth. Kareem would hit the Cavs with an amazing post move, and then LeBron would come right back with a thunderous dunk. But in the second half, all momentum was on LeBron's side, and this one became out of reach pretty quickly. Dude, it's not gonna work out. And it, of course, didn't work out, meaning Kareem was gonna have to take 10 games off at the start of next season. And then that 10 games became 30 games when LeBron went on to win a championship. Already down nearly 2,000 points, things weren't gonna get better
better for the captain anytime soon. In Kareem's absence, LeBron dominated the league no different than before, winning another championship and building his lead up to 4,000 points in just a two-season period. Kareem did what he could to get back on the board a little more, but he lost nearly all hope, having missed 70 games and having no answer for LeBron. Until he got a lucky break. Why is LeBron not playing? Torn ACL! Oh my... A devastating injury for LeBron was a blessing in disguise for Kareem, which he expressed maybe too much. Kareem, you look a little too happy about the injury, I'm not gonna lie. And the captain's enthusiasm translated to the court. He got after it in the regular season amidst LeBron's injury, scoring 1,777 points, becoming a one seed in the playoffs, and easily getting through all the teams to the finals and winning a championship. His complete turnaround inspired me so much that I became a little biased for a second. In addition to the ACL, LeBron's gonna be set back 20 games now and give a ring to Kareem. The momentum in this race was clearly on Kareem's side. And don't think for a second he didn't keep applying pressure. Because although in 2011 LeBron claimed some of his lead back, LeBron missed 20 games and still beat Kareem on the season in points. Kareem came back next season and won MVP and led his team to a championship, which set LeBron back another 20 games. But at least King James still had his 2300 point lead, which Kareem eliminated, scoring an ungodly amount of points. Kareem dropped 3,100 points on the season. He is now like this close to LeBron. He's like a thousand points off and it was like 3,000 earlier. LeBron's lead was now down to less than a thousand for the first time in years. But with the chip on his shoulder in the 2014 season, LeBron blew through the league, reclaiming some of his lead, becoming a one seed in the playoffs and setting up to play Kareem round two. This crucial matchup in an intense race got my blood but pumping. Both these teams are dominant. They're powerhouses. We've got two players competing for all-time scoring record. It doesn't get better than this. The two fought hard for six games, but now it was all down to one showdown to decide the winner and swing momentum one way or another. All comes down to one matchup, one matchup only. And this game seven was a rigorous battle on both sides. There were no dull moments. It was four quarters of straight action. A competition so intense that I had to jump in and see the ending for myself. I gotta, I gotta jump in. One point game, 30 seconds left, LeBron's up. And while I wanna say this game had a climactic ending, the Bucks need a stop. Here. It really ended with a stupid pass. What Brandon Jennings threw! And some free throws. Oh my god. <laughs> and some more free throws. Kareem sold Hassan again at the <laughs> And some more free throws. Okay, that one's really off. LeBron and the Cavs prevailed, and they would end up going all the way, winning a championship and putting LeBron in even better position. He's back in control of this thing, dude. Though LeBron's amid success put Kareem in a 30-game hole and made his almost 2,000-point lead bigger, he had plenty of chances to redeem himself, and that he did, beating LeBron in the playoffs in 2015. Kareem got his get back, man. He said, not this time, not this time, LeBron. In 2016, in a game seven, look at him, man. It's over. Over. And closing out the 2017 series with a sky hook. Kareem inside. KBJ hook, hook, hook. The year being 2017, Kareem was as close as he had ever been. He was within 400 points as a result of making LeBron miss a plethora of games. He kept on chasing, beating LeBron again in 2019. LeBron's taking another L. Winning another championship, getting closer to LeBron in 2020, even closer in 2021, but then giving up some slack in 2022. At this point, I could feel LeBron's victory right around the corner because in the 2023 season, Kareem was about 700 points behind. It would be nearly impossible to beat LeBron to the 38,387 point goal. This is LeBron's to lose. This statement was correct, but nonetheless, Kareem put his head down, focused, and still tried to get the goal. And as we zeroed in on the end of this race, and I waited for LeBron to win, I noticed something was off with the Cavs. LeBron- How? 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 LeBron out for two to four months with torn right meniscus. While I was devastated that LeBron's injury plague came back to bite him, I knew Kareem didn't feel any guilt whatsoever. And with two points to go, the captain made history on his home floor. Here we go, here we go, this is it. This is for all the marbles. <gasps> He's 
done it! Kareem did it, and just barely. 38,406 points, the record. And though he won this one, we know who the GOAT really is. If you want to see another player who's the GOAT, click the center of the screen to see me turn Ben Simmons into the Nets' savior.